Welcome to the first class of SAP Joint Venture Accounting. In this course, we're going to be covering what is Joint Venture Accounting and how do you configure this in SAP. At the end of this course, you should be able to configure Joint Venture Accounting and lead a project on your own. So first, what is Joint Venture? A joint venture is an agreement between two parties to work on a project together where one person might be the operator and then the other person gets the bill and there could be more than it's not just between two partners, but there could be many partners. So in the oil and gas scenario, those are companies which typically use SAP joint venture accounting. So what really happens is, just let me go over to this image here. The oil and gas companies, they're trying to find out where exactly should they be drilling for oil. So they have the seismic information. It's sort of like an x-ray of the earth or for the sea. They send radio waves and try to figure out where exactly do we find oil. And once they get this information, it's not 100% accurate, then they start drilling. So this is a very expensive process. They start drilling. If they don't find any oil, then all that money is a waste. So what they do is one person doesn't just do this all by himself all the time. They team up. So, for example, Shell will go to BP or some other small companies and say, hey, let's team up. I'll be the operator, meaning I'm going to incur all the expenses. We're going to do all the drilling, excavation, and so on, and we'll just send you a bill every month based on whatever terms we agreed upon. So this is a joint venture, and it is set up to reduce risk, and in essence what happens is, let me go over to this other screen. What companies do is they'll set up a joint operating agreement, which is the actual contract which states who is the partner. So, for example, Shell is the operator, and then in that joint operating agreement, they're going to partner with BP. Shell is going to operate it for 70%, BP has a 30% share in it, and what Shell does is they'll start doing all the cost, they'll start drilling, and then every month they'll send an invoice to BP for their 30%. And then you actually generate an invoice which has all the details of all the cost that were incurred, and then BP will look at it. If they think everything is correct, they'll pay you the bill, and obviously this is a very simple scenario, but what happens is, in a typical scenario, is you have one joint venture and there's more than one partner, sometimes 20, 30, or more. And some small mom and pop shops could have like 0.004%. And they say we're going to be in partnership with you guys from August 1st to September 1st, 2016. So now when these invoices come, they come much later on. And based on what date that invoice was for, the system has to figure out who to bill and how much to bill. So a joint operating agreement, let's say you set up joint operating agreement 1000. Below that joint operating agreement, what you do is you set up a joint venture. So joint operating agreement is the highest level. Below that is joint venture. So in the joint operating agreement, you first need to specify who are your partners. So for that, you have something called equity group. And within the equity group, you have your partners. So this is just a master data object. And in there, it'll specify that my partners are BP and we currently are the operators and we have 70% of the share. And so you have 30% for BP and then 70% for us. And this is for January 1st, 2016 to June 2016. And then after June, what happens is there's another partner who's interested. ConocoPhillips is interested and they'll get a 10% share. So any invoice that comes into the system after June 1st is going to be billed to BP for 20% and ConocoPhillips for 10%. Of course, we are 70% owners, so we are not going to bill ourselves. And so this is what joint venture accounting is for, is to recover the cost. It's to figure out who owes how much and then bill these partners and then get the money back from them. And we'll go through all the different master data scenarios, all the transactions that have to happen. But this is just an overview, so I'll talk to you guys in the next class.